So I have a question for all of my Christian listeners out there. When is the last time that you shared your faith with someone who is not a Christian? Has it been a while? I think for a lot of us it has, which is strange because if you look in the Bible, we see that we are supposed to follow the Great Commission and go share our faith with others. And when we look at the early Christians, they were just so bold about sharing their faith with anybody and everybody, no matter even when they were threatened, persecuted, threatened with death, it did not matter. They were sharing the good news of the gospel. So why is it that today we have a problem with this and we don't want to talk about what we believe? Well, if this is something you can relate to, if you want to share your faith but you're not really sure how, I definitely want you to stay tuned because today I'm going to be sharing with you how to share your faith in a way that is not creepy or weird or alienating people, um, but that helps you share the good news of the gospel. So definitely stay tuned. All right, so you want to talk about what you believe, your Christian faith, and the good news of the gospel with those around you. This is awesome. But before you open your mouth, there's a few things that we need to talk about just to kind of help you out so you know what to say and to help you avoid potential roadblocks. So the first thing that you need to do before you even begin to think about sharing the gospel is number one, be clear about your purpose. So what I mean by this is I think a lot of people get confused about the purpose of sharing the gospel and think that they have to have this whole big conversation where they convince somebody else to be a Christian too. And that's really not the entire purpose of sharing the gospel. Yes, ultimately we would love if everybody else became Christians and believed the same things as we did. Sure, that's wonderful. But the purpose of sharing the gospel is not to convince other people to be Christians also. It is not to convince them to believe the same thing as you. It is not to prove how your beliefs are right and their beliefs are wrong and how they should come over to your side. And none of that is what we were doing. We are not forcing them to believe anything. We are not even necessarily asking them to believe anything. It's not like this whole debate where you need to have all these theological knowledge and answer all of their objections. None of that is what we are talking about in this conversation. Yes, there are some time and place for that if there are people who want, who have questions, who want to have these conversations, but on the most simple level, none of that is what we're talking about today. It's not a big debate. It's not a big argument. It's not trying to prove or convince or share how we're right or how we know the answers at all. Um, if you don't know all the answers, totally fine because that's not the purpose of this, which leads us right into point number two, which is the purpose of this is number two, I want you to share your story. So what makes this method of sharing the gospel so much more effective is because you're taking the focus off of them and their beliefs and you're putting it on yourself. So as long as you're talking about yourself, people are far less likely to get defensive or angry or give you arguments because you're not trying to convince them of anything. You're not trying to tell them to do anything. You're just saying, hey, here's a story about me. Here's something I've learned. Here's something I've believed. And most people can be fairly polite and respectful enough to say, okay, you know, that's interesting to know that about you because you're not telling them what they need to do. So for example, this could be something that comes up in a conversation in a natural way, or it could be something where one day you just feel like sharing a story about yourself. That's a very normal thing to do within human interactions is to tell stories about your day. So for example, say you have a coworker and on Monday morning, they're like, how was your weekend? It is so easy. Um, instead of just saying, oh, it was fine, I did nothing, you could say, oh, it was really good. On Sunday, I went to church and the pastor talked about this and I learned this and I just thought that was really interesting. Now, that's not asking them to believe anything. That's not asking them to do anything. You're not being persuasive. All you were doing is sharing some of what you believe. Now, as we talked about a minute ago in the purpose of sharing the gospel, you're not trying to convince them. All you are doing, your only responsibility is to kind of plant that seed. So you're starting by setting an example and kind of sharing and explaining some of what you believe. And then you're trusting the Holy Spirit to take it from there. So the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to work on their heart. The Holy Spirit is the one who's going to convict them. The Holy Spirit is the one who's going to say, hey, you need this or hey, you need to pay attention. Your job is only to share what you know and what you have experienced. Um, other examples that you could do, you could tell just some stories from your past, um, whether they just you know, look for opportunities when they could 
could come up. So for example, I, um, for one, I was anorexic in high school for a while, and that is a story that I could share. You know, say if I was having lunch with somebody and they were starting to talk about a diet or whatever. Um, normal, totally normal female conversation talking about food. I could just naturally bring up in conversation, oh yeah, you know, I do this or whatever, um, and somehow bring up in conversation, oh yeah, I used to struggle with this in high school. And they might say, oh my goodness, I didn't know that, I had no idea, that's really interesting. And then that would be a launching pad for me to kind of talk more about my story and what I've learned um, and any lessons that I've gotten along the way. And I could say, and there's a whole huge backstory to all that, which I don't have time to get into here, but I could share that backstory and say, yeah, this is how it started and these are the lies that I believed and this is um, how I fell into that. But thankfully, you know, I was able to talk to a pastor and we were able to figure out some of the lies that I had been believing and how they were really, you know, hurting my life and the people around me. And once I was able to uncover some of these lies and find God's truth instead, like it really gave me so much freedom that I could overcome these lies and that I could make better choices. Um, and again, this is not something where you're telling them, hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to believe this. You're only sharing your own story in a way that most people are going to say, hey, that's interesting. Good to know. Maybe file it away for future reference. And then the Holy Spirit can work with them and through them, through the words you have said without you saying, oh, well, you know, I believe in Jesus and you need to too. All you're doing is sharing your story and the things you have learned and the things God has done in your life. Um, another example, a few years ago, I went to a... Um, Christian conference where God just really worked on me on some things that I was doing in my marriage that were not very productive. And I had no idea and I didn't realize it, but it was just like amazing the number of things he put into place, like people who came and talked to me and things that they said. Um, and there's been lots of times in my life where that has happened, um, where people have come and said things to me that they had no way of knowing. And it's, you know, clearly a God thing where he is working and doing things. Um, and that's just something you could bring up in conversation whenever you find an opportunity. If somebody um, says, oh, how was your, I know you went to a conference lately. How was your conference? It was amazing. Let me tell you about all these things that happened. Like I was struggling with this. I was worried about this and God did this. Um, and just being able to share your story, that's not something that they can argue with. People can't argue with me that somebody came and talked to me. And, you know, maybe they'll explain it away as a coincidence, which it's fine. They're allowed to believe whatever they want. But I can share my own story and I can plant those seeds of saying, hey, this is something that happened to me. And this is, you know, what I believe. And here's what I think. And I mean, they can see in my face, I'm excited about this. I care about this. I'm passionate about this. Like this is something real that happened to me that changed my life. And then they have the opportunity and the option on their own later to say, hey, is that something I want to know more about? Is that something I have more questions about? Do I want to hear more about this? Or, okay, that's nice for you. You can just go on your way. Um, and you're being respectful enough of people to give them that option and that opportunity because you're not trying to convince them. All you're doing is sharing your story. Um, another example, if they say, oh, if they can um, admit to you like, oh my goodness, my husband and I are fighting over whatever. I'm really struggling with my parenting right now. Um, it's another, just another door where you can open up the conversation and say, I know what that's like. I've been there. I've struggled with that too in the past and you know here's how I get through it. You know, when I read my Bible, it really gives me the strength that I need to make good choices or, you know, just sharing your own story. Here's what I do. Here's what that looks like for me as a Christian. And then planting those seeds and letting them decide with the Holy Spirit's help, is that resonating with them? Is that something they want to know more about? Then they know you're somebody who they can come and ask those questions when they're ready to ask those more theological questions. But at the first steps, it's just planting the seeds and then letting the Holy Spirit work on them from there. All right, number three, know the gospel. So if you are a Christian who has been in church for any length of time, chances are you probably know some Christian-y things about what Christians believe. But do you know the gospel well enough that you can explain it in an easy to understand, clear and succinct manner um, to somebody else? And do you know enough that you can answer some of the most common questions or objections they may have? Now, First, we started with sharing our story. That's great, and that's where we're going to want to start most of the time. But if you are talking to somebody who wants to know more, who is interested, they're not just going to stop with your story. Then they're going to start asking questions. Now, a lot of people won't, but 
if you get somebody who is open, who wants to know more, then you need to know enough of the gospel in order to be able to share it with them. Um, and I don't want this to intimidate you, but it's just something that you right now can be prepared for so that when you have these opportunities come up, that you will know what to say with more confidence and you can explain it in a clear and easy to understand way um, and be able to answer their questions. So a couple things that I want to talk about just to make sure that you are ready to um, handle some of the most common pitfalls. Um, one thing to make sure of is make sure you are not saying that Christianity is a life improvement plan because it is not. Um, Christianity is not just like here's you know the fad diet trend not diet fad trend thing going on right now. Um, you know, if you just do this thing, your life is going to be wonderful and perfect. You know, follow Jesus and all your dreams will come true. Or, you know, follow Jesus because he'll give you a wonderful life. That's not the gospel at all. And if you read um, in Acts, like, that's clearly not what happened. The people who became Christians were persecuted and died. So it's not like, hey, follow Jesus and all your dreams will come true. That's not the gospel. So avoid sharing it like this life improvement plan. Like, if you just follow Jesus everything will be okay. You also want to avoid sharing the gospel as if it is just one option out of, here's a lot of different things you can believe, but here's just what I believe. It's totally fine to start with, hey, here's what I believe, um, but you want to avoid taking it to the extent where you're like, okay, well, that's just what I believe, but you can believe, you know, whatever you want, and it's totally fine. They're all legit because that's not logical truth. Like, it's not possible for Jesus to be God and for Jesus to not be God and for both of those things to be true at the same time. Like, there is one truth that is true, um, and as Christians, we believe that this is what it is. So this is not just like one option out of many, and it's not just this fluffy, nice life improvement plan. There is actually a message to the gospel. So I'm going to go over this with you really fast just to make sure that you fully understand and like we have our little refresher course um, because as Christians a lot of time in church we don't go over the core message of the gospel so much because we always assume oh everybody already knows this already so we're just going to talk about how to live out the details but it is important to go back to what is the core message of the gospel so here is your really quick um, just overview here is what Christians as a whole believe um, about the gospel message. So the first thing to know is that there is a God. Um, and most people, I think most people would be fairly open to that idea. You know, you can say as a Christian, here's what I believe, that there is a God and he created everything that you can see and everything you can't see. Like he is the creator and originator of everything. And because he's God, he knows way more than we do. Like we know some stuff, but like this is God. He knows everything. And as God, he created the earth and created the world to be done a certain way. Um, and he's God, he gets to do that and he gets to decide how things will be. And as the creator, he has put some rules in place for us um, of saying, this is how life works best and this is how I expect you to behave. Um, and this is what I want from you. Not because he's some mean, like terrible person in the sky, but because he's God and he knows way more than we do and he understands way more than we do about what's best. So God has set laws apart for us to say, hey, you should obey these laws, like the Ten Commandments, for example, like don't kill people and don't covet and you know don't do adultery and all these other things. Like God has set forth these rules for us because he loves us to protect us and to show us like this is how life works best when you live according to these rules. Um, there are rules. That's just life. Like we can talk about Christianity in terms of a relationship all day, but at the end of the day, like there is a God who set rules for this is how Christians are to behave. Now, the next part of the gospel is that obviously we're human. We didn't follow the rules. Every single person, every single person has sinned in some way. Every single person has done something wrong. And in America today, we like to talk a lot about, oh, you know, what's fine for you. It's fine. For, it's not that bad. But God says this is sin, and if we do things that God has said this is sin and we do it, then we are guilty. We have messed up. We have sinned. We have broken our relationship with God. And this is very serious because this is God. We want to have a great relationship with him. But when there is sin in our life, when we are guilty, whatever it is, that breaks our relationship with God. It's not God punishing us. It's not God being mean to us. It's God has said, this is what I expect. And we have said, no thanks. We're going to do things our own way. And we have chosen to break our relationship with him. Now, the good news of the gospel and the best part about the gospel is that God loved us so much that in our sin, he didn't just leave us there. He said, hey, I want to be with you so much. I love you so much that I'm going to make a way that um, 
that we can cover your sin, that we can get this taken care of. Because as humans, we can't pay for our sin. Like it's too bad. Like we have um, gone against the God of the entire universe. And how could we ever repay him? We can't. We're like measly little humans. Like what are we supposed to do? So what God did was he sent his son, Jesus, who was perfect to take the punishment for our sins or the consequences, as I like to say with my kids, he took the consequences of our sins and he took all of that so that we wouldn't have to. And that's amazing just to think of as a parent. Like I could not even imagine like giving up my kid so that some murderer could be right with God. Like, no, these are my kids. I will keep them. Thank you. Um, but that's what God did. He loved us so much that he sent his only son to die, to take the consequences so that we wouldn't have to, so that we could be right with God, so that we could have a good relationship with him, so that we could know him and be with him and love him. And he would love us, which he always loves us. Um, so that it would restore this great relationship with him. And that's the purpose of the gospel. But you can't stop there because it's great what God did, but it's not going to, but he's also a gentleman. He doesn't force us either way to believe or not to believe. It is a choice that we make every day. Do we accept this forgiveness from God or do we say, no, thank you? Um, and we have the choice. It's a totally free gift that we can accept this gift. That's all you have to do is pray to God and say, I am so sorry for the times that I have sinned. I am so sorry. I have messed up so bad on my own. Like, I can't do this. I am not good enough on my own. But through Jesus, we have forgiveness. And all you have to do is accept it. And then after that, you'll obviously want to live according to that and try to live up to your calling. If God calls you to be a Christian, that you would want, if you believe in him, you're going to act like it, basically. So if you really are a Christian, if you really believe it, you're going to want to grow in love of him. You're going to want to grow in love of others and you're going to want to walk out that calling. So that's basically the gospel in a nutshell. That's the nutshell of information that you're going to want to share with somebody. And obviously you'll tailor it to however works for them. And I know it sounds like a mouthful just to share it all like that, but that's the information and the steps that people need to know. And if you leave out any of those steps, it's not going to be as effective. Um, if you try to share Christianity is just, oh, it's just this life improvement plan and it'll make your life better. Well, what happens when your life's not better? Because Christians are not promised. <laughs> like we're promised a hard life. That's just part of what it is. It's, the Bible says in this world, you will have troubles. Like it's not a life improvement plan. But if you can talk to people when they are ready for this conversation to say, hey, we, um, depending on whatever they're dealing with, like, yeah, your life's a mess because you have made choices that are against God's will for you, but he loves you and he wants to forgive you and he wants a right relationship with you. And you can turn from what you're doing right now and be in a right relationship with him. And in fact, I had somebody who shared the gospel with me. Um, I mentioned a little bit ago about a conference that I went to. And that's basically what happened at this conference is um, God sent somebody to talk to me. And there was a issue going on in my marriage that I didn't even know. Um, I wasn't doing it on purpose. It was my fault, but I had no idea. Um, and they came to me and they were like, what's going on? And I just like shared with them. And I was like, here's what's going on. And I think I'm behaving this way and I'm just not realizing it. And I had no idea. And like, I feel terrible. And um, she looked at me and she said, Brittany, what you are doing is sin. It is wrong. And I was like, oh, like nobody likes to hear that. And she said, but that's good news. And I was like, how is this good news to hear? And she said, it's good news because you serve a savior who offers forgiveness and when you turn from your sin he can fix it and he can fix you and I was like that is good news like and I just realized that that's the gospel message it's that we can't on our own live a life worthy of our calling we can't on our own have a right relationship with God but he loved us so much that when we are messing things up or even if your life is good like you still need Jesus um no matter what your life is like you can turn and have forgiveness for your sins and have that right relationship with him. So once you are ready to have that conversation, just knowing the basics is going to help you because those are all the things that you need to make sure get into that conversation. Because if you were only saying, oh, well, you should be a Christian because like it's the, you know, a way of thinking that's equal to all the others or, oh, because it will make your life better. Like that's not going to help them. That's not the real gospel message. And that's not going to actually help them to understand what it means to be a Christian. Um, 
So just making sure that you understand the gospel enough that you can explain it. Um, and then the second part of that too is to make sure that you know the answers to some of the most common questions that people have. Again, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed or freak out about this. Like, I don't know all the answers to all the things. It's totally fine to not know all the answers to all the things. You can just say, hey, I don't know. Like, let's go look that up together. Let's go look in the Bible. Let's go ask a pastor. Let's go email your favorite blogger, Brittany at Equipping Godly Women, and, you know, ask a question. That's totally fine. Like, none of us know all the answers, um, but it does help to know some of the basics so that if people come at you and they're like, yeah, but, you know, objection, 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 you can say, well, actually, like, here's some things you may not know that your objections aren't really true. Um, so a few things, I will leave links in the show notes for this, but if you are worried because you don't feel like you know the gospel well enough, um, a couple of books that I've read and loved, um, one is The Case for Christ, um, totally walks through um, how Jesus could, like proofs of how Jesus was a real person and the Bible is true and all of that, like the evidence for that. That's a really good one to read. Um, that's called Christian Apologetics. Basically, it's just the study of what we believe and why. And just having some of that knowledge is going to really help you in these conversations. And then another book that's really good, it's really similar, is Cold Case Christianity. That is really good. And um, another one, which is a little different, but I read and thought was really good, is talking to your kids about God. Obviously, you might not be talking to your kids in this conversation, but this one is really good just because it has so many like objections and then it goes through and gives you like the science and the history behind. It's not boring though. Um, so much like knowledge that you can use to say, oh, actually to your objection, like there's, here's your answers. Um, so that will just kind of help equip you and make you feel more confident as you're sharing the gospel that, okay, you know, the basic gospel message, and then you have the answers to some of the most common questions. I'm um, just having all that knowledge is going to help you to be able to explain it better and feel more confident and be more likely to share it if you have those things in advance. So that's something you wanna start doing right away so that you know. All right, number four is be sensitive to hot button issues. So honestly, how I talked a minute ago about making sure you know the gospel and making sure you have answers to the common um, objections, yes, you absolutely do want to have that knowledge. However, it's not gonna be enough just to have that because the truth is most of America has been to church before. Like this is a predominantly Christian country in the fact that like most people are familiar with the Bible. Most people are already familiar with what Christianity believes and what we teach as a whole. Like it's not that they don't know about Jesus. It's not that they don't know um, that Jesus died, that Christians believe Jesus died for our sins, etc. Like most people, honestly, they do know a lot of that. And the issue isn't that they don't know and they don't have the answers to the questions. The issue is they don't see how that's going to play out in their own life, particularly when it comes to a lot of hot button issues. So in America, we have a lot of beliefs about things and being politically correct and being inclusive. And a lot of that is good, um, but it can cause some damage too. So if you're talking to somebody who has had an abortion before, if you're talking to somebody who is a gay or transgender, if you are talking to somebody who's been divorced before, you know, all of these things that the Bible is pretty clear, like these aren't good things. Um, it's going to take a lot of grace and a lot of careful wording. Um, and you're going to really want to be sensitive to that because the issue for a lot of people isn't that they don't know the gospel message. The issue is that they are living in a certain way that they don't want to give up or they feel a certain way that they, um, think is valid and they, which it's valid to feel however you feel, um, but they don't want to give up what they have for something that doesn't make sense to them. So you want to really be careful and sensitive that you're not coming at them with your Bible and be like, well, the Bible says you, this, what, that, whatever, but that you're being sensitive and that you're walking through them with a gospel message of love, which is what it is, um, but also a gospel message that holds to truth that says, hey, God created us. He created a way of this is how we're supposed to be. Um, this is what he expects for us. And when we don't live according to his law, like there are consequences and things happen, um, whether you believe it or not, that's just the truth of what it is. Um, but that you're saying it in a really loving way, that you're not condemning them, that you're not saying, oh, well, you need to be a Christian so you can stop being this other way. Um, but so that you're giving them a gospel message that is both love and truth um, and just, and that you're saying, hey, it's because God loves you because he wants what's best for you. And you know, I don't have all the answers either. I don't know how this all plays out. I honestly, myself and you, none of us know um, all of the details, but we can rest assured that there is a God who loves us 
we can rest assured that he has given us laws for our own protection um, and that there is a way to honor God and to live in truth um, and have a good relationship with him no matter what the world around us says. Oh, all these things are fine. Like they're not fine, but we can be kind and we can be respectful and we can point them to the gospel rather than just shaming people. So that's just something that's really important to keep in mind. And then last of all, number five is keep your eyes open for opportunities. So like I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, there are so many times where things just kind of come up in conversation that just provide doorways for you to kind of begin to share some of your story. Remember, you're not trying to convince them. You're not trying to tell them that they're wrong or prove or whatever. All you're trying to do is say, hey, this is what I believe and this is why. Um, and to kind of be that positive influence around them and to kind of plant the seeds that the Holy Spirit can water and to say, hey, this is what I believe and this is what it is. Um, because maybe they are familiar with Christianity, but they've always seen a really bad version of it before. Uh, maybe they've always felt shamed and they've always felt judged their whole life, especially by Christians. We have a terrible reputation of that. But what if you were the Christian who could come to them and say, you know what, I am a Christian and this is what it like this is what it looks like to be a Christian that actually loves somebody and cares about them. And I want to share my story with you because it's helpful to you not to prove you wrong, not to prove a point, not to prove that I know more or I'm better than you. But hey, here's what it looks like to me. Here's what I believe. Here's why I believe. And here's what it looks like to be a Christian who believes truth, but also in a way that is very loving to those around me as well. And honestly, I think that's what a lot of people need um, because in America, we have so many people who want to live, and of course we all do. We want to do the things we want to do. We want to live our own way. And we just see like, oh, there's no consequences. We can do whatever. But the gospel is that there are consequences. And the gospel is that we do need to turn to God and we do need to repent of our sins. And we do need to live according to God's laws. And for me, as somebody who believes that is literally gospel truth, um, why would I not want to share that with people? Like this is eternity we're talking about. This is the rest of their life. This is their relationship with God. And if there are people that I know of, if there are people around me, if there are people around you, like I think it's kind of a jerk to not tell them, hey, here is what is going on. Here's the problem. Like you are in pain. You have these things going on or you're not in a right relationship with God. And I have the answer of how you can fix that and be in a right relationship with God. I have the answer. Um, that's not always fun to say to like, hey, you need to go repent of your sin. But if I have that answer that's going to help you have a right relationship with God, that's a jerk thing not to tell them. And so it's not always fun, but like to have those conversations, just start in a friendly, kind way and say, you know what? Here's what I believe. Here's how I live. Here's why. Here's what it looks like to be a Christian who can love people. Um, but still say, hey, there are rules. That's just the world that we live in. So hopefully this has kind of cleared up some of any misconceptions or worries that you have about sharing the gospel. You're not trying to convince or argue or beat people down with the Bible. All you're trying to do is say, hey, this is what I believe. This is why. Um, this is how it's played out in my life. And this is how it can play out in your life as well. If this is something that the Holy Spirit is prompting you towards, if it's something that you're interested in, Christianity does not have to look the way it, so many people have portrayed it. It does not have to be this horrible, like, follow the rules or we'll beat you with our Bibles. You're a horrible person kind of thing. It is ultimately a gospel of love, but truth and justice. And so being able to share, like, this is what Christianity should look like. This is what Christianity really means at its core that's what people need. So I just really encourage you today, um, take some time and make sure you know what the gospel message is. Make sure you know some common objections um, and the answers to them. Like going in and reading the gospels, going in and reading Acts is a really good one. Going and reading a couple of the books that I mentioned, um, Cold Case Christianity and The Case for Christ are two fantastic ones. Um, and then talking with your kids about God. And I will link all of those in the show notes. Um, but having that knowledge is going to give you those com that confidence that you need to start having those conversations where you can show people, hey, this is what real Christianity looks like. This is what it means um, to be a real Christian, not just somebody who beats people with the Bible. I will just say it that way. Um, but here's what it means to have a real relationship. And here's how I live that out. And if the Holy Spirit is prompting you towards that, and if that sounds something that's interesting to you, I will absolutely love to share as much as I can to help you have this too, because it is so worth it. Like I always say, Christianity is not easy. It is countercultural. It is scary, um, but it's so worth it. Like what else 
what else would you do than have a relationship with the God of the universe who loves you and would send his only son to die for you? That's pretty special. So I'm going to wrap it up for today. Hopefully this inspires you, equips you, gives you more confidence or whatever you need. Definitely, if you were thinking, hey, this is something that I need to do more of. If you were thinking, hey, I know of somebody who I know I need to talk to about the gospel and you're ready for more resources, as always, check out the show notes. I'm going to link a bunch of stuff down there that's going to be really helpful to you. Um, and also, if you have not subscribed to the Equipping Godly Women podcast yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. I come back all the time with the um, knowledge and information, the challenging and encouragement that you need to walk out this Christian life. And I would love to walk along beside you as we do this. So definitely go ahead and subscribe so you do not miss out. And I will talk to you again soon. All right. Bye.